Let's talk about polling and an asynchronous request reply pattern. What is it? So let's say your client is trying to send a request to the server and this request is taking a long time to be processed by the server, let's say a minute. Now, how do you make sure that the client is still waiting for the request to be processed and then can act accordingly while letting your users to wait on the page, all right? So let's say we made a request, the service processing the request. Um, within the polling concept, we're, what we're gonna do is simply set an interval and within this interval, we're gonna send a request to the server checking if the resource is ready to download or to process, is if the resource is processed and the server, let's say, says not yet, then 10 seconds later, we're gonna pull it again. This is what's called polling. And eventually the resource is ready. We either get redirected or we are able to download or we get some kind of a notification on the page saying successfully processed, okay? For example, if you booked something. Now there's another concept called long polling. So not to mix them up together, long polling is different. You usually would make one request and the server would take care of the rest. So from the client side perspective, it's the same when it comes to polling and long polling. In this case, in the same case of long polling, the server is simply gonna take a bit longer and basically take its time. And at the end, hopefully your request timeout is a bit longer. So the request doesn't time out and it's gonna return a re resource. Now I would suggest to actually use a WebSocket when it comes to long polling, because in this case, you're really letting your users to wait along without any re response from the server. So the client is actually kind of clueless. Maybe go for a WebSocket in this case. But in the case of polling, if you really want to avoid complicating logic on your backend and simply let the client to sometimes check the status, a better pattern is actually called asynchronous request reply pattern. Now, what does it look like? We're gonna see the code in a minute, but I wanna just show you the sketch so that you have an understanding. So the client is gonna make a request and then we're going to, basically we make a request to the client. The server is gonna return a 202, meaning accepted. And within this accepted response, the we're gonna receive a JSON file. Well, the JSON file is gonna contain any data, but specifically a resource URL, meaning a specific URL that we can actually later go to and download the resource. Now we can also send a specific timeout value, let's say 20, um, meaning poll every 20 seconds, maybe 20 is a bit long, but you get the idea. Now we also have another endpoint here that we're gonna check the status of. So the client is also aware that there's another endpoint and we're gonna hit this endpoint with a specific resource URL and or rather resource ID because we're also gonna get the ID, not to forget, not only the resource URL. We're gonna send the specific ID to check the status. If the status is 200, it means we're still processing. If the status is 301, it means it's finished and we automatically get redirected. Where do we get redirected? We get redirected to this resource, exactly. And as soon as we get redirected here, we basically are done. Now, if you didn't understand the concept, pause with the video and actually read this article and you're gonna understand everything. Or I'm also gonna link the video on API design where I actually covered this as well. So let's go back to the demo. So this is our demo, the very simple app where we're trying to go to our resource eventually. But what we're gonna do here is, um, so if we look at our application, we have a server file and we have a script file. Of course, I have the index HTML and so on, but the most important parts are here. So the server has one endpoint point called start task. And the start task is basically going to return a task ID. So the task ID is going to be taken from the current time. And we're going to create a resource URL. In this case, it's an HTML page called resource 42. How cute. And we're going to return to the client the following thing. We're going to return the status. We're going to say it's processing the resource URL, the eventual resource URL where our gem is located. And we're going to send the, uh, the client our 202 uh, task ID. And what we're doing here, just to simulate the asynchronous task, we're actually having a dictionary where we're going to save the specific task ID with its status. And then we also have the second endpoint where we target the task ID that we sent previously. And the task ID is basically going to check if it's completed. If it is, then we're going to redirect 
by sending a 302, not 301, as I said before. If not, we're going to send a JSON saying status not found. OK, this is still going to return a 200, even though we didn't specify. OK, now the script is again very simple. We have a simple button that's going to start the task. And as soon as the task is started, we're simply going to print something. OK, the client doesn't do much here, except it's polling every two seconds. And by the way, our response is going to arrive in 30 seconds. So we have enough time to look at our network tab. I'd let's actually start the application. So I'm going to say node server and we go to our application here. So I'm going to click start task. And start task is making the first request and it returns 202 accepted. And as you can see, we're polling the server with a specific task ID because task ID is saved on the front end and we're polling. And every time we do, we get a 200 OK. And at some point we should actually get a 302 and redirect it to our gem page our resource page. Let's wait a bit longer so you can see. And now we are redirected to welcome to resource 42 and it can actually download meaning of life. So in which cases or rather for which cases is this pattern useful? Let's discuss this as well. This pattern is useful when you want your application to be scalable because this the fact that we are able to define a resource and have such a fine grained um, endpoint that returns a fine grained status for each resource makes our backend more scalable. Okay, in the simple case of polling, the same controller endpoint most likely has to process everything, meaning it has to not only do the processing itself, but also check if the processing has done or not. This is more distributed and more modular. So for complicated cases, if your app is actually a production app, I would go with something like this. I hope you guys liked the video. I hope you learned something new. And by the way, if there are many mechanisms to let the user to restore the connection, because if the user navigates away from the page, the polling is going to be canceled. Okay, we're on a different page. Well, what, can, what you can do is you can use a service worker or you can use a local storage to then download the or reload the state of the polling from local storage and resume it. Okay, if you're interested about learning that, just leave me a comment below and I'm going to definitely cover that because this goes beyond this video. And until then, I'm going to see you in the next one. Goodbye.